Hi, everybody. I'm Eugene Bradley, founder and CEO of the Silicon Valley Transit Users. I'm sure by now you've heard of the latest cost estimates of the second phase of the BART extension into San Jose and Santa Clara. As of October 2021, the federal government has already projected that the BART extension into these two cities would cost a total of $9.1 billion, with a B, billion dollars. Video is coming up of the VTA, Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority's Capital Programming Committee meeting that they had on October 28th. It gives a report about the current status of the BART project, and VTA board members and staff ask various questions and make statements about this project. However, it seems, according to the video, some of the staff said some rather interesting, deceptive things about the cost of this project. I'll let you decide who said what for yourself in the video. More on who said what in the video is in the description. Oh, some kudos go to council member and VTA board member Raul Perales request that this report be formally presented to the board of directors and the public more in full. So thank you, council member Perales, for that. Thank you. And enjoy the video. And please make comments, kind ones and respectful ones in the comments section. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Chair, you can go ahead and get started um, whenever you're ready. Do we have a quorum yet? N no, Chair, not yet. We only have two members at this time. And we need three or four? I believe three. Okay, let's, let's wait another minute before we get started. Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and start our meeting. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. I wanna call to order this October 28th, 2021 meeting of the Capital Program Committee. Um, Thalia, I think you're doing our roll call for us, please. Yes, Chair. Chavez? Perales? Here. Licardo? Aye. Constantine? Hendricks? Attending. Thank you. Um, we have three present and our quorum is four, so you'll be meeting as a committee of the whole now until okay. someone else shows up. Mr. Chair, I know that uh, Director Chavez and I just came from an MTC meeting. She, she may still be there. I, I don't know. I think she's actually in person in San Francisco, so it may be more challenging for her. Yeah, I, I heard she might have a conflict, so... Um... Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to press forward. Um, first, just some general reminders for people. Members of the public wishing to address the committee should use their raised hand feature in Zoom or star nine. Um, and then just so everyone is aware, um, we have some uh, people that are attending this meeting have some real commitments. Um, and we're going to have a kind of a hard stop that around 115 or earlier. Um, so we're going to try and get everything done if we can by that time frame. If everybody can just keep that in mind with their comments and as we proceed forward. I'm going to move on to item two, which is public comments. This person's wanting to address the committee on members not on the agenda. Speaker's going to be limited to two minutes. Uh, are there any members of the public who'd like to speak on public comments? Yes, Chair. We have one member of the public with their hand raised. Roland, okay. you may begin speaking when ready. Good afternoon and thank you. And I'm going to follow up on the comments I just made at MTC, um, the same meeting. Uh, this is essentially a preview of what I'm going to be telling the board next week, except I get two minutes instead of one. Monday's announcement by the FDA proved once and for all 
that the BART project is now beyond out of control. Cost has doubled for four, from $4.7 billion, or approximately $1 billion per mile, to $9.1 billion, or approximately $2 billion per mile. Station designs are beyond a catastrophe. Specifically, if you go anywhere else in the world, whether it's Tokyo, Paris, London, New York, you're never ever going to see a station that looks like a 30 foot high uh, flying saucer or mushroom, whatever you want to call it, when you've got zoning in excess uh, uh, for building heights in excess of 200 feet. Uh, in closing, I'm asking this committee and the board to immediately terminate first the Kimley Holt Home contract, which is responsible for the station design catastrophe, and secondly, the HNGB Parsons brings a half contract. We should never have been allowed in the first place. These people are directly responsible for this project getting completely out of control. The construction, construction packages are a mess. I make it very clear to this board, unless you take some decisive action by the end of the year, next year I will start pursuing legislation that's going to take care of this board on a permanent basis and we're going to be moving on with the bar project on more, more reasonable terms. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think that's the last public speaker we have. So I'm going to close that section, move on to item three, orders of the day. The staff or my colleagues have any changes they want to make to the agenda? No. I'm not seeing any. Um, because we're not changing anything, we don't have to take a vote. Um, we're moving on to the next item, item four, which is our consent agenda. Um, so, do my co colleagues want to um, <clears throat> pull anything? I heard that. Let me go ahead and see. I'll second if it. Okay, so we have a motion for the consent and a second, but we don't have a quorum, so we're not going to be able to actually vote on it. Take that back. <laughs> but let me go ahead and take it back and see if there's any public comments right now. I'm going to wait one, wait two, wait three. I'm seeing no raise hands in that. So I'm closing the public comment section. Um, if we uh, end up with a fourth person, we'll come back to this item. Um, I'm now to item five, a discussion and review of the input, uh, provide input on continued development of the strategic capital investment plan, the SKIP. And I think uh, Stephen is, uh, Stephen is gonna talk to us. I am, uh, thank you, Chair Hendricks and good afternoon committee members. So as Chair Hendricks said, this is to provide an update on the ongoing SKIP development process. Next slide, please. So a quick review on the, the goals. Um, it's to increase board level input both early and throughout the entire capital process, enhance the board awareness of the long-term capital decisions, operating cost implications, including life cycle costs, uh, give information on the potential trade-offs and reasonable alternatives. Uh, the overall process is to present information needed for the board to balance short versus long-term capital needs. Next, please. So as a reminder, it's a 20-year planning horizon. It include, it's comprehensive and includes all VTA modes, transit highways, VTP projects, et cetera. Two components, and I wanna stop here. The, we started out as what we were calling the cap five years one through five fully financially constrained and prioritized. This is an evolving process as we got farther in it became obvious that we would be better served to do a cap six because it equates to three two year biennial budget cycles. So we have uh, changed to that which means the second component of the skip is year seven through 20. They are not constrained, not prioritized. It's basically a list of projected needs. So this committee guides the entire project and the board uh, through the recommendations of the CPC determines and adopts the priorities. We've already been through that process. It's refreshed every two years to address change conditions and the board's priorities. And it's done early enough to inform the biennial budget. And the stage we are at now, part of the, is that it culminates with the CPC recommended and a board adopted written plan that defines all the elements. Next slide, please. This is just a quick visual representation of the process. 
Uh, on the left in the green is the CAP-6, prioritized fiscally constrained. And then on the right side is the outer 14 years, not constrained, not prioritized. Again, just kind of the list, listing, a look ahead of what we think is coming up. Next slide. You've seen this before. This is really uh, the workflow. And you'll see on bubble seven and eight, we're kind of in the middle of those two. Because as you will remember, the board approved the first two years of the skip in the biennial budget. So that part's done. However, we are completing the remainder of the skip, the remaining 18 years. And that's what this update is on and what you'll see at your next meeting. Next slide, okay. Thank you. So um, here's basically the status of where we are. As I mentioned before, uh, the CPC recommended the board approve the, uh, the priorities and the scoring prioritization process. Uh, then we were derailed a bit because of the cyber attack and other factors. And the decision was made to focus on completing the first two years, the cap one and two, for the biennial budget, which we did, and then focusing on uh, turning our attentions to uh, finishing the remainder, and that's where we are now. So as I said, uh, the board adopted the skip in the first two years of the skip as part of the budget in June, and then the last bullet is what we're doing now. We're working on the years three through six, and then the remaining, the outer 14 years. So some of the factors that we're working through and why it's taking longer than planned, uh, the cyber attack, the Guadalupe tragedy, uh, some ongoing and emerging effects of the pandemic, uh, staffing and vendor availability issues, supply chain issues. Uh, we are not completed or have a resolution of the next gen high capacity transit study. Uh, we're still working on bus fleet and facility electrification. And then another major factor is the change at the GM CEO and Carolyn's focus was to restore light rail service. And so we've not had much opportunity to meet with her or incorporate the, uh, her short and long-term priorities or her vision. We've also had some turnover in, in other leadership, uh, our chief financial officer, deputy director of finance, all those things, the kind of ripple effects and made it a little harder to go. Uh, we've also been doing efforts to prioritize uh, getting a listing ready of the best one-time uses of any potential unanticipated capital funding received. Next slide. So here's uh, kind of a key component. Given all that's happened, we decided to step back. It, it was the demonstrated need to reevaluate all the previously submitted 130 projects. Uh, we reviewed the scope schedule budget and the grants and made modifications where necessary. The point being we were trying to uh, deliver the project in the most efficient manner, integrate, balance, synchronize all of them with some of the changes that have happened. So right now, our current focus is on completion of the inaugural skip. Uh, there are numerous moving pieces, uh, uncertainty when specific elements will be known. Uh, the next gen study is one of them. Uh, many balls in the air. And the skip by its nature reflects the best estimates information at a given time. Uh, it's a snapshot. So, and because it's updated every two years and the next one would be started, you know, 12 to 18 months, started and completed with 12 to 18 months, we're focusing on the rapid uh, completion of the inaugural skip. So here are the next steps. Uh, you're receiving this update at your meeting today. At your next meeting, our intention is to submit the projects in the CAP three through six for your review and hopefully recommendation. And we're working on the skip document itself and we're gonna submit as maybe the whole thing or as many chapters as possible to get this committee's uh, review and input and potential recommendation. Then we come back at your, what is projected to be your February meeting with the final skip document for your review and recommendation to the board. 
and then you go to the board in March for final adoption. And with that, I will close and see if there are any questions. Sorry about that. I'm going to open it up to the public first and see if there are any comments. I'm going to wait one, two, three. I'm not seeing any hands in the public comment section, so I'm going to go ahead and close public comments. And I'm going to reach out to my colleagues, um, uh, Director Ricardo or Director Perales. Nope. I'm seeing some shaking heads of no. Um, I just have one. I, so I understand the update. It's really here. There's uh, information coming to us in the next thing. Is, is there anything you need from us before the next meeting to help you with this, uh, what the work you're doing? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. I think where the most valuable input will be received is at the next meeting, because then we can provide you the draft product and get your input and direction on how to go forward. Okay, excellent. I'll interpret that to yes, please stay out of our way while we do the good work for the committee. Um, anything else for my colleagues? I'm going to take that as a no. This is just a discussion item, so there's no vote on this. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next item, which is item six, is to receive the 2000 Measure A Transit Improvement Program semi-annual report ending June 30, 2021. And this is back to uh, Stephen again. Okay, um, I just want to provide a little preamble to this. As I mentioned earlier, um, the CPC is charged with the responsibility for development and prioritization of the projects for the capital plan, which the board approves. However, another major responsibility of this commission or committee is to, at a policy level, monitor progress and ensure that the plan is executed on a reasonable basis. In effect, cradle to grave or womb to tomb responsibility. So given that, staff will periodically be, be providing high-level high level summary reports on the schedule and project of major capital projects. And, and this will be done on an exception basis, noting any material deviations from the scope or schedule. And this is part of our, as I mentioned earlier, part of the continuing effort to provide useful information to this committee and the board on the status and the challenges of BTA's capital program in which those bodies need to make informed decisions. So um, the next two items are examples of this, the semi-annual reports ending June 30th for 2000 Measure A projects. And the second one is the BTP program. And the takeaway from this is I'd like the committee to um, notice the number of projects. Um, you have professional staff that is balancing and delivering many, many projects all at once. And they're, it's triple figures. And you'll see some of those that Ken will now talk about. Thank you. So the first item that um, we're going to present today is on all the Major A program-wide uh, Major A. There's really three main activities. Um, and so Bernice Albanese is going to take us through the first part, which is the BART um, Silicon Valley. And then I'm going to follow up with EBRC and then a couple miscellaneous bus projects. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, give you some background on the BART Silicon Valley various extension project that was part of the Measure A program. Um, as many of you are aware, we uh, started passenger service a little over a year ago in June of uh, 2020. Um, we still have some work to uh, do with warranties and manuals, and um, in, in my section of the external affairs, we've done some recent uh, verification of our projections on noise and vibration to ensure that uh, we are within those levels, which we are. So just things to do post-revenue uh, service. Um, we have regular meetings with City of San Jose and Milpitas um, to basically close out and close out those agreements. There were a couple of punch list items with the City of San Jose. And we have since closed those out um, related to the various station. And then as part of the project, a companion project was the completion of the Montague pedestrian overcrossing, um, which uh, provides a safe way to get across Montague Expressway for those coming um, from the opposite side of Montague Expressway where the station is and linking to the Great Mall and a significant amount of housing. Next slide, please. 
This is the uh, Montague pedestrian bridge with a very robust um, artistic element. When we worked with the city of Milpitas, it was very important for the city that this be a visually pleasing gateway to the city of Milpitas. And as you can see, it's, it's very um, artistically pleasing, colorful, and just a great statement entering into that part of the city. This is the opening for the Milpitas uh, pedestrian overcrossing, which um, as you can see was well attended and um, a, a safety and connectivity um, project that was very important to the city. So for the BART Silicon Valley phase two part of the program, um, lots of recent good positive news um some of the media didn't maybe have that um, as the uh, spin on it but um back in september we were notified that our project was being accepted for um, the epd funding program which is the expedited project delivery program the premise of that program is to deliver projects get them funded sooner to bring those benefits to the public we received notice just this week on Monday that um, we're officially uh, qualified through that program for funding and we're issued a letter of intent. Basically, that letter of intent is the FTA's intent to fund the project. And we will be working through with the FTA over the next two years to look at um, getting cost certainty with um, bids, um, looking at reducing and mitigating uh, any kind of risk um, this program, because it is an expedited program, we applied back based on a funding plan and design that's at a very early stage. And now we've since advanced that. So we've already done some of that risk reduction by advancing more design, but we will be working closely with the FFGA. But uh, to sum everything up, really, this is a milestone for the project because it demonstrates the FTAs confidence in VTA to deliver this project and that we have demonstrated to the FTA that we have the management capacity and technical capacity to deliver this project. Next slide, please. These are our contracts. Uh, as I have mentioned before, I believe to this group last year, we have four major contracts that this project will be delivered through. The systems contract, the tunnel and track work contract, which is the largest contract. It comprises about 65% of the entire phase two project. We also have the New Hall Yard in Santa Clara station and the other three stations, we call them underground stations, but they are above ground stations with below ground boarding platforms. We have already issued the RFPs for both uh, CP1, which is the systems and the uh, tunnel and track work contract. Those two will be awarded spring um, of this year and summer. And then the stations contracts will be, uh, the RFPs will be put out early, uh, early 2022, and those will be uh, awarded sometime summer 2023. So making significant progress. The other, other aspect of getting the issuance of the LOI is it enables us to advance this project, acquire real estate, uh, put out these contracts and do early construction works, as well as start procuring things like this tunnel boring machine that you see here on the right. This is our framework to completion. And it shows, as you can see, the green checks are where we are in that procurement process. You can see the first two, the systems tunnel and track work. They have check marks on the orange flags, which are the RFPs. You can see the orange flags for the Santa Clara station and yard and the other three stations um, in the 2022 timeframe. We have approximately uh, through 2028 with construction. And then the turquoise bar on the bottom, that is for system testing and integration. And we've allowed ample time of that, both based on uh, how complicated the project is and our experience on phase one. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Before I go to my colleagues, let's go ahead and open up to the public, see if they have any um, thoughts they'd like to share with us. Do we have any uh, public speakers, please? Yes, we have one. Roland, you may begin speaking when ready. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to bring to your attention there is a letter in your packet under this item, um, which touches on the $2.5 billion in the unreported cost. I'm going to give you an example. This beautiful Montague um, overpass, $22.3 billion, that is not part of the cost being reported to you, to MTC, or the uh, FTA. 
Um, now, the, the reason why this $2.5 billion in unreported costs is not just this, this overpass. It's about $1.4 billion of actual construction, and then another $1.1 billion on top of that, which is going to be the debt service that we're going to have to service between now and uh, June 2036, when Measure A ex expires. Um, but this debt is not being recognized until they actually um, uh, re repay the, um, uh, the capital and the interest. And that's why you're seeing this creep or year and over again, okay? We're not supposed to be following GASB principles here. We're supposed to be providing the board with actual cost estimates. That's the bottom line here. Is that the end? Of, okay, I think that's the end of his comments. Um, I think that was the only public speaker, so I'm going to close the public speaker section, and I'm going to go to uh, Director Ricardo. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, I just had a couple quick questions. Uh, forgive me if this is redundant from past information that's been provided, but the level of design uh, we had for this BART Phase two at the time we submitted uh, for the EPD, was that 15%? Yeah, it was very early with 15, and, and that's with with the typical FTA new starts, you're like at more than 30% or so. So that's what's contributed to that higher level of risk and contingency. And where are we now on design? We're pretty much at 30% and, and advancing okay. more. So we, we progressed significantly. And the federal government couldn't consider the 30% when they issued their cost estimate. They had to depend on the 15%. Right. They based it on our application, which was done back in the April timeframe, right? So we've, we've progressed significantly since then. And that was part of our, um, what I want to say, case against some of the risk and contingency they signed, is that it was based on even much earlier level design than we are right now. Right. So, um, like I know many uh, at, at the VTA who have been following this carefully, I, I don't believe we're going to have a 9.1 billion dollar price tag on this but obviously all of us are concerned about the the escalation that has happened and um is it possible we could have if not offline then certainly publicly just a description of you know the path of this from the 4.7 billion to whatever it is we're getting at the time of the bids obviously we're not going to know what it costs until the bids come back uh, but there's been history all along here, and we know there's been natural cost escalation, particularly through the pandemic, and I know that's what the federal government has been particularly focused on is supply chain interruptions and so forth. Um, is it possible we could get some kind of um, description, uh, of, you know, accurate narrative of, of, of how those numbers have moved and why, uh, as we are continuing to advocate state level and elsewhere as we think about uh, ensuring we need, you know, we can get this under underway. Absolutely, and and we did actually do that for the um, 5.6 to the 6.9. I think it was, you know, real estate acquisitions and things like mm -hmm. such, like that. Um, right. So we definitely have that, and then basically from the 6.9 now to this 9.9, um, 9.1 is what the federal government has demonstrated, right? But I, I also think it's important to note that for phase one, um, which was at a much further level of design when we submitted for the FTA application, we came in under what that projection was. And then in my conversations with the FTA, there are many projects that are coming in under that very, what right. I want to say, conservative or high FTA estimate. So Yeah, no, I appreciate now. what the FTA essentially offers a high end of a range. And I don't think the public understands that well. And unfortunately, the media right. doesn't seem to understand that well based on what I've read. Um, but it is important for us to understand just how we got to the 6.9. Sure. Um, from the very beginning, and and obviously we do expect there's going to be some escalation because we know during this pandemic there's escalation. Um, so just be helpful for all of us to have, be on the same page of just understanding what exactly the facts are that got here, got us Absolutely. here, and then obviously we want to make sure that was public so that way um, we're not getting sort of false narratives thrown around. Absolutely. Uh, We'll trace that back to the 4.7. We've got okay. we've got the latter two two shifts, but we'll trace that back to the initial 4.7. Thank you, Bernice. I appreciate that very much. Um, with regard to the RFP on the station design, I know that's not yet out on the street, um, and I, I know uh, we're at a bit of a disadvantage if Takis is not online, so I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I'm happy to take this offline, but 
I know we're going to have an out alternate for station design with regard to uh, supporting structures and in, in buttresses that will enable um, vertical construction above the station, uh, which I all I think we all hope we can make happen somehow. Uh, and I think there's you know there are sources out there that can make that happen. Um, it seems to me there's a lot of other criticism out there about um, issues, for example, around integration of this station with Deardon and the passenger experience in terms of having the quickest, most direct routes from one train to another. Now, we don't have Deardon station designed yet. I, I, I understand that, but it would be helpful to know to the extent that there are variations that would qualify as quote unquote better station design um, that enables shorter trips um, for passengers or more direct trips um, that we could service those in some way and consider those as also as add alternates uh, that could be considered if there are additional costs that at least we could sort of flesh that out through the bidding process. Is, is that something that VTA is looking at now? I'll have to check with the engineering team. I know that in the, uh, basically they did the base scenario and then the base option to support with those structural elements to support TOD. And I think in one of the presentations we shared, there were definitely for some higher levels of development, there was uh, structural elements that would infringe on the station footprint, right? And make a bigger footprint. So I know in the base case scenarios for the TOD and where we looked at what level was able to be supported with the TOD. It was within the constraints of the station is currently designed based on the BART facility standards. So we had to consider that of the essentials for the station. I'll have to check if there are any other further accommodations that we could make without uh, impacting the base station design. I think that's what we'd have to look at because that was definitely the consideration with this TOD option that we'll be carrying in the station's contracts yeah. for TOD. I understand station contract is the last one to go out the door. Is that right? Uh, the, it, it, the, um, we have tunnel and track work and systems. The three underground stations, uh, 20th Street, Little Portugal, downtown and Deridon will right. be issued before the Santa Clara station contract. There, ha there has been some discussion though about waiting a little bit longer on that one as okay. of yesterday, just for support potentially for us and also for some forbidding um, opportunities in the market. So that might be something, but I don't know. I mean, it's, okay. it's not on the critical path like the tunnel is. Yeah, so, understood. So Carolyn, is there an opportunity just to be able to take the station's package back to either the board or this committee, just so we could be fully informed about what are the ad alternates that might be included in this? you know, what are we leaving behind and what are we potentially we could bring it back to this committee to walk through um, what the, the current station is and what any odd alternates are. And yeah. then can I also get a clarification or, or, or is, the, is the concerns, there's the TOD discussion, but then there's also the connections with the, the other modes, correct? Yes. Right. And that's the For other sure. issue in that. So, so those are two things I think we could discuss. I mean, granted, there's a lot of engineering done, it's probably ready, but it is, they are design built. So um, I think it's mostly the area that's biggest concern, and Bernice, you can correct me or not, is really the station, the structural elements of the station boxes are going to be constructed as part of the tunnel contract. But okay. things that we might want to think about, we should probably discuss sooner than later. Yes. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. I mean, I think you know that there's been some concern about different design elements in these stations. and. I think it would just be good for all of us to have a very public kind of understanding. I know we're making some trade-offs to reduce costs and we have to do that. Um, but it's really important for us, I think, to be really deliberate and intentional about those decisions. So, so, Sam, let's take your idea though. We'll go ahead and we'll get that agendized to this committee. Um, hopefully at our next meeting, um, if, and if for some reason it can, it would be the next one. But we'll try take all these issues and try and wrap it through that process. Agreed, thanks. Okay. Um, and before I go to Raul, can I just go back to, uh, never mind. Um, Raul, let's go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to tack on to what uh, the mayor was saying uh, about getting um, a, a nice detailed um, presentation to the board on this sort of ballooned estimate from FTA. And uh, I, I, 
I didn't necessarily hear from Bernice where you would respond back on that. I was actually going to make that request at our next uh, board meeting. Um, but since the mayor's made it here, I would just say I, I think it's going to be valuable to the board, but also then obviously valuable to the public to be able to hear a presentation on that because as um, as uh, mayor pointed out, clearly there's a lot of alarms ringing right now. And so I think we, we should be able to have that conversation when when could we uh, have that agendized for the board? Um, we might be able to get everything with the memo preparation and everything for December, I would think, with that analysis. I'm not sure. November is probably a little too quick, but I would say December. I would just say December we could do it as part of the presentation on the bar right. project. That, that would be helpful. Uh, yeah, I was going to make that request at the board meeting, but like I said, it's being made now, so might as well see if we can get that agendized December would be would be great. That was it. Thanks. And um, so that was what I was going to ask about. Um, but the thing I would ask is in our board meeting next um, week, as part of the presentation, just so the whole board will know, can you just have a line item or a, a bullet that says so that's, uh, forthcoming? Um, that's, that's coming in the December meeting sure. so that everybody is aware um, of what's happening with that. And then um, I had uh, one other question I just wanted to ask about in here also in this section also is the extend light rail from downtown to um, the East Ridge piece. And I was just wondering, what's the next point in time where we would be making uh, uh, commitments of additional dollars to that infrastructure, not dollars that have already been committed, but what, what is the, I don't, I don't, you know, quarter, month, of when the next time we have a, uh, will be a decision point for large in infrastructure spending on that. So Ken, you answer that question, but, uh, but it has to be caveated that we could engineering wise be ready, but we don't have the funding. So it will depend. Okay. Ken. Yeah, so it's a good question. And there is a slide in the presentation that we offered. We don't need to go to it. Um, but it did talk about the schedule and the interdependency for the budget. So simply put, um, the engineering package will be ready by the summer of 2022 to advertise the construction contract. And that would include a relationship with utility relocation that's ongoing now and property acquisition that's ongoing now. At that time, uh, two things would have to happen in order to advertise that contract. We would need the $130 million of RM3 money, and we would need a board commitment for an additional amount of about $30 million, of which is currently now uh, not in the project, either Major A or other sources, um, in order to, to support the work. Now, to be truly um, accurate about it, we have enough money to advertise the contract um, with the 130 million RM3. We would not have enough money to administer the construction support. And so we would think that we would need to have all of the fully funded program by the time we advertise, which right now would be mid next year. Uh, we wouldn't award the contract until late next year if we advertised it in the summer for our current schedule. Now, I do want to say that I meanwhile also trying to, get, um, and this was asked actually at the last um, ANF a meeting, um, and it, uh, Chair Hendricks. And so we are looking at putting a, a schedule that actually talks about looking at where we're going with our light rail system in the future and where does the decision point cross that we need to make in terms of Eastridge as well, so that we could see what's driving what. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it sounds like there are multiple interdependencies of uh, different swim lanes that are going to come together before we would be at a point of of trying to execute on something like that. Then. Correct. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, I, that's what I wanted to understand. Um, Sam, you still have your hand up. Did you have something else you wanted to ask? No, I'm just bad about lowering my hand. No, it's not, that's <laughs> good. I just, you know. Um, if I'm not seeing any other comments uh, from my colleagues, again, this is an informational item. Mr. So, Chair? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. I need to ask Ken, uh, he had more in his presentation. Do you wish to uh, continue with that, Ken, or did you basically cover it? 
no, in the spirit of the time constraints, I think we've covered the important items. Thank you. Okay, okay thanks. I, 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 if I cut uh, the presentation off, I apologize. Um, um, seeing no other comments or questions, I'm going to move on to our next item, which is seven, receive the Valley Transportation Plan Transit Program Semi-Annual Report for June 30, 2021. And uh, this looks like this is uh, Suja. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Suja Prasad. Um, I'm the Project Controls uh, Manager for Engineering and Program Delivery Division. Um, this is uh, the semi-annual report that we generally take to the board twice a year. One for a report ending June and then the next time for report ending December. So this particular report covers January 2021 to June of 2021. So if I can just go through and provide an overview of the VTP program. Uh, the VTP program projects um, are from the long range county wide transportation plan, which at the time of preparing this report was the VTP 2040, but as you know, as of last week, it is the uh, recently adopted plan area, um, plan Bay area 2050. Now this uh, then feeds into the RTP or the regional transportation plan and is a prerequisite for us to receive um, any federal state or regional funds. Uh, now the distinguishing aspect of uh, the projects in the VTP program uh, is that all funds are grant fund, all projects are grant funded and we do not use any transit funds for this um, program. Now the report as such is divided into five sections. Um, the first section, uh, we have uh, projects in the study phase. Um, considering time constraints, I won't go into each project. I'll just zoom into a few projects here and then we have some interesting pictures at the end, um, more to do with projects that are in construction phase. So I will leave more time for that. So um, regarding projects here, I'll zoom into SR 237 Improvement Lawrence Expressway to 101 project. We have secured funds um, from the city and, for, and from Google for this. And uh, we are in the project process um, of doing an alternative analysis and traffic assessment. Um, now the Bascom Corridor Complete Streets is another project that is ongoing in the sense we completed the study last year. We are working with stakeholders to define the scope of the next phase uh, and we hope to issue an RFP for the design contract uh, very soon. Uh, the Central Bikeway Feasibility Alternative Analysis Project is another project um, that um, we have completed the alternative analysis. We've zoomed into one um, option, not one option, one alignment, and we are currently uh, working on developing a 10% conceptual design for that one uh, alignment. Uh, we are also planning to issue an RFP for the countywide local road safety plan soon. So if we can go into the next, yeah. So these are again, 10 projects that are in the environmental phase or the preliminary engineering phase. Um, uh, prime, the first two projects are on hold, uh, waiting for funding. Uh, project, the third project, which is the SR87 Capital Expressway Interchange Project, we've issued an RFP in um, August for design services and we hope to award uh, at the November board. All the remaining, Seven projects are all in PAD phase and ongoing, except the SR87 technology improvements project, which is currently on hold, waiting for some legislation. Uh, we can go to the next slide. These are projects in the final design. Um, the, pro the first project there, we've actually environmentally cleared, I believe, about 10 locations, uh, two of which uh, we have uh, secured funding and advertised the contract and the construction contract is going to uh, begin soon. And this is for US 101.87 and US 101 story. Uh, the other projects um, in this category are all under design phase. Um, and we hope to, you know, as mentioned in the status, you can see we hope to advertise at least three construction contracts in the next, next calendar year, that is in 2022. Uh, 
going to projects in the construction phase. Uh, we have six projects. Um, the first project is technically not a construction project, but it's a project that we uh, reimburse uh, Open Space Authority to maintain the property that we purchased, about 500 plus acres of property that we purchased um, as, um, as part of uh, the US 101 widening uh, project, um, not as, as uh, a com mitigation for the US 101 widening project. Now the other projects, SR 237 US 101 Mathilda, the construction is completed. We are in project closeout phase and we also have the landscaping design uh, being done currently and we hope to advertise the construction contract early next year. Uh, similarly, the Foothill Expressway, we've completed the construction contract and hope to advertise uh, the landscaping contract along with the Mathilda. So it'll be one construction contract um, going out to cover both these locations. Um, the landscaping at I I280, I80, I80 Stevens Creek is in the PEP phase and we should be finishing the three year requirements soon. Uh, the US 101 Blossom Hill interchange project and the US 101 De La Cruz are the two construction projects that are currently ongoing. So if we can go to the next slide, these are projects, um, the uh, express lane projects. So you can see the first project, first, first four projects there are complete, closed in the sense the first project was really a project that was established to develop the program. The second and third were projects uh, to, to clear the um, 85 and 101 environmentally. So we've closed that too. The SR 237 phase one project is the revenue service. Um, and so that's closed. SR 237 phase two, we've completed the construction. We've completed the warranty and the project is currently in close out and we hope to close the project by end of the year. Phase three is currently in construction. So you'll see just from that um, when Jean goes, gets to the pictures. Uh, phase four and phase five are in final design. Um, and um, the, um, the noise reduction on SR85, we've awarded a contract and the design is ongoing. Uh, and then uh, we have the remaining phases of the Silicon Valley Express Lane program for which we have not yet secured the funds, uh, but we just wanted to show you the whole picture of the program. So that's why we have uh, this slide just devoted to uh, the Express Lanes. Um, so the next slide. So this slide just gives you a summary of where we are with all the projects in this program. It looks very colorful and complicated, but basically when you see a blue line, the red is where we are in October. And when you see a blue bar, that means we are in, we are in construction. So at any point in time, you can see we have at least a three to maybe even eight project construction contracts ongoing. Now we have the interesting part of the presentation, the pictures. So hand over to Jean. Okay, thanks, Suja. Uh, uh, Jean Gonzalo, I'm the Highway Capital Program Manager. Uh, in front of you, you see uh, progress pictures of the Matilda project uh, when they were uh, putting down the pavement and uh, putting in uh, sidewalk and uh, curb work. But uh, as Suja said, this project is completed and the next slide shows uh, an aerial, aerial view of the project. Uh, the left photo is at uh, 101 Matilda where we converted the, the uh, um, interchange to a partial cloverleaf with two new signalized intersections. And going through that interchange, we also uh, implemented uh, uh, improved bike and ped facilities. On the right is a view of uh, the project uh, looking along uh, Matilda Avenue from Awani going to the, the north or the east. So uh, it's a brand new project, looks great, um, been operating well. Next slide is um, our other project that has completed, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, is, has been closed out. This is at uh, 280 in Foothill in the uh, um, northbound direction. This project widened the uh, off-ramp to a two-lane off-ramp to uh, minimize um, the weaving and uh, uh, 
congestion along between the 85 uh, freeway and this this uh, off ramp. So um, Caltrans is currently working on the project at the intersection for the signal work that for this project is, uh, as you can see, all the uh, dirt work. Uh, we, we have a follow-up landscaping uh, project to, to complete this uh, uh, work. Um, next slide is uh, the, the 101 Blossom Hill, which is in progress. This is some of the work that's going on. Uh, the first photo on the left um, is on Blossom Hill Road looking west. And um, <clears throat> the, the major work here is uh, the widening and also the building of the um, grade separated uh, um, bike path that's going to go through this in, uh, interchange. Um, and on the left um, is the looking in the opposite direction. Uh, as you can see on the off ramp, there is a structure there that's where bicyclists are going to be able to cross the ramp without conflicting with the freeway movement. Um, this project is uh, estimated to be completed by late next year. So uh, we're, we're moving uh, fairly well on this one. Next slide is um, uh, the 101 Trimble <laughs> interchange. We had a recent project launch event, uh, which uh, chair uh, 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 emceed. So uh, this picture of the team uh, from San Jose, from uh, Santa Clara County Roads and Airports, uh, our consultant team, uh, Caltrans, and, uh, and um, our construction management team. Um, so this is, uh, they've, they've broken ground there. Uh, They've taken out some of the median uh, curb islands, but they're they're moving along uh, on this project. Um, next slide, I believe, is uh, our express lanes project. Uh, again, progress photos. We uh, expect the, the this project to open for revenue service uh, in January next year. So uh, working with the uh, uh, County of San Mateo on their express lane projects and we're uh, going to coordinate to open at the same time. Uh, I believe that's the last one. Is there any more? Nope. That's it. Uh, I'm welcome to answer any questions. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and go to our um, public speakers first and then we'll um, come back to my colleagues. All right, thank you, Chair. We have one public speaker. Roland, you may begin speaking when ready. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And um, I think that um, oh, the way this is being presented to you is really deceiving. So I'd like to start by uh, page four, and it's telling you uh, US 101 winding Monterey Road to SR 129, $450 million. Well, what is that? That's Highway 101 south of Highway 25, which itself is south of Gilroy. So just imagine how much more traffic is going to be dumped into that. And, and it's not only that. So they're dumping additional traffic from 129 onto 101. That's why they have to wind in it. All that stuff is heading straight north um, uh, to Gilroy. The next one, SR 152 Trade Corridor. Well, I think you know where that is. That's Gilroy on both ends. What was the end result? I touched on this at MCC yesterday. And it showed there's a link 21 slide that says that we are going to have 220,000 single occupant vehicle round trips by 2040. How is that going to work? I'm not seeing any way that they're going to be adding express lanes between Morgan Hill and Gero. Moving forward, staff have to come back and show you geographically where these projects are, where the money is going. Now, moving on to slide 12, which is in my backyard, you can see all this uh, traffic piling up. Okay, We've got this massive traffic jam that is caused by what they just did. And the reason this traffic is waiting is that right, so I'm looking at the picture to the, um, uh, to the right, there's a new traffic light. And the reason there is a new traffic light is because they added a second 
uh, southbound, you know, heading towards um, uh, Eden Lane, and that's why they need a traffic light. For the last 30 years, we had a single lane that was merging in without interfering with all the traffic that was coming from Boston Mill trying to go into 101 South. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm not seeing any other public speakers. I'm going to go ahead and close the public speaker section. I'm going to go to Director Licardo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a quick question. Thank you very much for the presentation. Gene, I, I just had a question about who we could talk to at VTA about specifically those freeway interchange projects. Um, long story here, but we have some developers that are very innovative who like to see if there are ways of actually getting utilities into those clover leaves. Um, mm -hmm. we, we actually think there may be a solution for homeless housing that I know is we, we, we want to explore very carefully around safety and so forth, but uh, around the potential use of prefabricated product. And who could we talk to at BTA who's managing those to at least give some indication about whether there's a way for folks to be able to try to, with other sources of funding to be able to get into those clover leaves without interrupting the construction activity in any way. Yeah, so those are actually under Caltrans jurisdiction, but uh, if uh, I would be the person to to contact and I can coordinate with with staff at Caltrans and connect uh, whoever needs to discuss this topic with them. But yeah, Great. I, I contact. Thank you very much. We have been talking to Caltrans, um, but uh, we haven't been talking to you, so that's important. Thank you. Sure. Okay, thanks. Are there any other of my colleagues that have any comments or questions? Um, Member Constantine. Thank you, John. I just wanted to make, mention that I am now on the meeting. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out how to clone myself. Uh, and I had a prior meeting, so I um, just want to let everybody know that I am now, uh, I've just joined the meeting. Okay, it's good. I saw you were there. We're, we're going to go back in our agenda at, when we're done with this item um, to do something. Glad I could help. Oh, always. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. So first of all, I want to tell staff, I, I actually went through and I read this whole report in a great amount of detail. And I, I reached out to, and I want to thank all for all the information that's here. Um, I reached out to Stephen um, in front, before the meeting and maybe offline if we could get together, because I have some ideas of maybe ways we might be able to improve the, the presentation of some of the data. And just as an example, if um, somebody could go to slide five, please, just to give an example. And by the way, that Trimble project, that we was, I was very happy to be there to get that kicked off. But here, this is, this, we're showing projects that are in the design phase. And I just want to double check, is the I-280 Wolf interchange $103 million right there. Is that $103 million for design or does that also include construction money? Uh, these are total project costs. So from the beginning to the to close out, it's all, all costs in, in, included. So okay. it's environmental work, design work, uh, right away acquisition, uh, construction, and uh, all the soft costs. Yeah, because one of the things that you know, there was a there's a number right at the beginning that says 88% of all of these dollar numbers are not funded right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, you know, I think the, the dollars are the key part as it relates to the board now, because these are all kind of in the, in the way. And I want to just, you know, try and um, see if, get with everybody and see if we can try and identify what is the parts of these that are funded versus the parts that are not. Because it also shows up in the Gantt chart where there's a line down the middle that shows what the funded part is. That's right. But all those different blocks are not equal in their cost. No. So all the blue lines that are not funded, that's where a big chunk of that 88 or 88% 88 is of not funding. Um, so again, I just think, you know, to make it and to just visualize the great information you guys have, that's where I, I'm going to try and schedule a meeting offline and see if we can just make any improvements to the presentation. I think all the raw excellent information is there. I just think we can improve um, some presentation to the board. Um, before I move on, any last thoughts or comments from my colleagues? I'm going to go ahead and close this item. Again, this is informational and there was nothing um, for us to go ahead and vote on. Now that we have a quorum, I'd like to go ahead and go back to the consent agenda. We've already had our public hearing on this topic. So moved. 
And it sounds like we have a motion from second. Member Licardo and a second from uh, Raul. Um, if there are no comments or questions on this, can we please vote? I caught staff by surprise there. Yep. Yes, Chair, we can go ahead and do that. Um, Chavez is absent. Carlos? Yes. Licardo? Yes. Constantine? Aye. Hendricks? Yes. That passes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now we're going to go ahead and jump forward um, again. We're at item eight, which is uh, items of concern and referral. Do any of my colleagues have any items they wish to bring to the attention of the, our administration? I'm going to pause. Uh, somebody's hands up. Uh, Member Constantine. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and again, I, I apologize uh, for being late. And I kind of came in uh, at the towards the end of item seven. But uh, the member of the public that raised the question uh, of, of the um, HOV lane, or I should say the need of the HOV lane, in uh, between Gilroy and uh, Morgan Hill. It would be remiss if I did not uh, also make mention that that is an area that we really need to, to, to look at. And just looking at the other projects that were on the, on the list, um, <clears throat> my concern is that we know that, that this area is an area of concern, yet I do not see the planning uh, or the, uh, the future uh, look at possibly putting in an HOV lane there. So again, I, I just want to make sure that we we think about that uh, because as we make it more convenient and we add more vehicles north and south of the South County, as I've said before, we are the center of the hourglass. And if it's predictable, it's preventable. And I just want to make mention of that and that we always keep that in mind. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, Member Licardo. I like that. I'm going to steal that, uh, Member Constantine. If it's predictable, it's it's preventable. It's spoken like a true firefighter. Um, so uh, I, I just wanted to ask if um, I know that staff is overwhelmed right now with a lot of important projects, and I know we've still got a lot of hiring to do, but it seems like a lot's coming down the pike regionally, and maybe this is more of a TPO issue than a CPC, but um, around uh, consolidate, consolidation and coordination of regional transit pricing, um, wayfinding, and fares and all those issues. And I, I wonder if it might be helpful uh, to have a discussion at the board level, uh, just raise that for folks' consideration um, so that MTC commissioners can be well informed about how the board views this and also how staff really views all these potential changes. I think they're going to be pretty significant coming down the pike. Okay, um, I'll just put that out there. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, here, Carolyn probably heard what you said, and yeah. we'll yeah. see from an agenda perspective where that might fit um, to be able to try and get that done. We, we have it noted, and we'll respond accordingly. Thank you. Uh, anything else for items of concern and referral? Moving on to the work, reviewing the committee work plan. Stephen? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Your next meeting is Friday, December 17th at noon, instead of the normal uh, fourth Thursday of the month. I understand there was a conflict with the holiday party. Everyone has confirmed for that day. Uh, as previously mentioned, to the items you'll see is uh, approval of the CAP three to six projects and some of the skip documents. And we also have the two items that uh, Mayor Licardo requested. And that's my report. Okay. Um, my colleagues have anything they would want to add there? Um, I think I should check for um, public comments or oh, public comments are not allowed here. Thank you. Um, the committee staff report, Stephen. Okay, in the interest of time, I have no staff report other to say than Go Bart Silicon Valley phase two. Okay. Um, there's no report there, but I will ask if there's any public comment that anyone wants to make. 
going once, twice, three times. Okay, I'm going to close the public comment section. I'm assuming none of my colleagues had anything they wanted to ask. Um, my chairperson's report, I, I had a 69 page presentation I was going to give, but we'll pass on that today. I have no um, report to give uh, for what goes on. Um, I will check and see if there's any public comment to the non report right there. I'm going to go one, two, three, close the public comment section. Um, I'm going to move on. This is uh, item 12, determine the consent agenda for the upcoming board of directors meeting. Um, and I don't think we have anything that, to come from this meeting that we need to make a decision on. Is that correct, staff? That is correct, Chair Hendricks. Okay, so there's no public comment on that item. Does anyone have any announcements? This is an opportunity for my colleagues to say awesome, wonderful things that are going on. We're not going to announce them, but we all have us lots of awesome, wonderful things going on um, as it relates to transit and around um, our cities and region. Um, so with no announcements, I'm going to go ahead and get to um, item 14, which is to adjourn. Um, we're ahead of schedule on what it is. I know have people have places they want to go, but I do just want to make one last comment. I've been trying to do this at all our different meetings. I really want to thank the VTA employees. Um, they're out, they've been working really hard. Um, there's a lot of good work that's being done to get people um, moving on transit. We're starting to see a little bit of improvement um, from, of people getting out and around as it relates to the pandemic and just means that public transit is going to be even more important and more critical. And so I just want to thank uh, everyone who's on the VTA staff for the important work that they're doing day in and day out um, to move people around the region. So with that, if no one has any other comments to say, I'm gonna go ahead and adjourn today's meeting at 106. Thank you everyone for attending and being here today. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Have a happy Thanksgiving.